Hello everybody, I'm Daniel Montiglo from Foreign RBG and today we are with Dr. Marin Gelesov. He's assistant professor in the Barna Medical University in the Cathedral of Anatomy and Cell Biology. He's an expert and is in our section today. We're going to discuss about some doubts that the people have about uh, coronavirus and especially focusing in the Bulgarian reality. Hello, Marin. How are you? I'm healthy. Okay. Thank you for having me. No, I'm you. not coughing, uh, not sneezing, so... Thank you for taking the time to be with us today. And I would like to start with a few questions that we have prepared. And the first one is, why there are so few COVID-19 cases in Bulgaria compared with other European countries? That, that's a pretty good question. Uh, most probably because, uh, so there are two reasons. Uh, the first, re po two possible reasons. The first possible reason is that we aren't testing enough people. So it, maybe we have a few confirmed cases, but uh, that the actual number of cases is higher. However, this is a problem in a lot of countries. Another reason is perhaps that we've uh, implemented pretty strict measures right uh, from the start. So we had uh, very few cases, but the government immediately imposed uh, uh, pretty restrictive measures. Uh, and that, I think, uh, helped contain the spread of the virus. Other countries waited for uh, too long and uh, when um, the virus spreads rapidly, uh, it's difficult to contain it afterwards. Mm -hmm. And since you are in the cell field, you have any idea when we're going to have a vaccine for the coronavirus, or is it realistic to think about that? Mm -hmm. uh, usually a vaccine takes 10 to 15 years of development, but people are speeding up the developmental process uh, because we face a global pandemic. Uh, and optimistically, the, the optimistic projections are that we are going to have a vaccine within 18 months, the least. That sounds like a lot of time, but uh, when we when we know that a vaccine takes so much more time to be developed, it's actually pretty cool that we're going to have one earlier. Yeah, and the, the discoveration between the, the different, I know that is different companies, pharmaceutical governments and, and, and independent companies trying to fund this vaccine. There is some kind of cooperation in this or everybody try their own method? I don't have enough information to say for sure, but uh, definitely now there there is a, there is going to be a lot of money for whoever develops a vaccine first. And I can see what happens uh, in backstage, so to speak. But uh, uh, mm -hmm. definitely, there there is going to be some form of uh, communication between different actors to speed up the development. Mm -hmm. And we we every day we hear that is a a new combination of all medicines that start yeah. to work pretty good in the recovering people from the COVID-19 disease. What, what is that the stage of, on that? You know, there's a lot of contradictory information starting from the uh, some president's opinions and stuff like that. The contradictory information comes uh, from the way science is uh, being done. Uh, the, the scientific process and especially the clinical investigation in medicine, the clinical research, that takes a lot of time. Usually we uh, gather data from large pools of patients and then we use complex statistical uh, methods to analyze that data and to draw some valid conclusions from the data. With the current pandemic, we gather data every day. So every day when we add the new data to the old one and when we run our statistical tests, new insights pop up. And since we, we get so many cases every day, uh, it is logical to assume that we are going to draw different conclusions. 
However, uh, all of this is just preliminary research and uh, we see some correlations, but that doesn't mean that uh, these correlations are true or uh, that uh, they are going to be true in the future. The best thing is that we will know for sure only after the pandemic is over when we have enough cases and enough time to analyze uh, the data thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And from the statistical approach about the reality in Bulgaria and the way that is spreading the infection, when people say when we're going to reach the peak and when we start gradually to, to, to go down in that curve, of the, the number of infected people and stuff like that. Do you, what, what are your prognosis on that? Or do you have any? Um, I've, I can only discuss what I've heard from colleagues and uh, other experts who uh, are, have more in-depth knowledge uh, about what is currently happening. We, uh, according to my last data, we expected the peak to be somewhere in May. So in May and afterwards, uh, we should see a uh, slowing down of cases and uh, uh, you know, uh, reducing the epidemic here. And this slowing down is going to be gradually, like the, was the, 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 the picking up of the curve is going to be also gradually or, or the case is going to stop quickly? Should should be gradually. The whole thing with the flattening of the curve uh, as we hear it all the time, is to uh, not reduce, not so much to reduce the absolute amount of cases, number of cases, but to spread out these cases in time, so that we don't have many sick people at once. And when we have fewer sick people at once, we can take care of them better, that improves survival. However, that will stretch the uh, duration of the epidemic here in time. But mm -hmm. uh, if, if the peak is in May, we should see uh, improvement in the rates of infection afterwards. Then connecting with this idea, do, when do you think we can, if we're going to go back to normal life and if we go in that way, when is realistic to think this could be? I fear that it won't be soon enough. A few months at least, uh, and uh, even then I'm not sure whether we will return back to normal life because a lot of measures have been implemented which may stay even after the pandemic. And another question that people is very worried. We will see a situation like in United States, Spain and Italy here in Bulgaria. Is that possible? Highly unlikely. We should have seen such a situation already. Uh, in this sense, as I said, the measures which we took early on were pretty restrictive in Bulgaria and that helped. So we closed the borders pretty early. We've uh, limited travel among uh, cities pretty early. And I see that people are actually practicing uh, social distancing uh, most people are wearing masks. Uh, there aren't that many people in the streets. Well, we hear about uh, all people who do not follow the rules, uh, but in but those are just a few people. Uh, but most of them uh, stay at home, uh, work from home. These measures work, even even if you implement the restrictive measures a day earlier that may reduce the number of cases several times uh, in the following weeks. So we did that really early, really restrictive, and uh, we, see the, we see that we have few cases and few deaths here. All right. Now I would like to have your opinion in some information that is going around in the internet. And I want to know your, your professional opinion on this. The first one is that the coronavirus is a foreign bioweapon. What do you think about that? Uh, I, I don't have a professional opinion, but I can speak as an informed citizen. Uh, since I'm not a professional in developing uh, bioweapons. Uh, that is 
okay, likely. So, so nobody will tell you for sure. But let's think about it. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Uh, there has, I, there has been, uh, there is a bio weapons development lab near Wuhan. So that, that that's possible. Uh, some people who analyze the genome of the virus uh, draw, draw conclusions that uh, it may be artificially developed. However, um, nature itself is fully capable of producing such a virus. And uh, some epidemiologic experts were actually predicting that a, coronavirus, a global coronavirus pandemic is highly likely. And uh, they even published books about that several years ago. Why is this true? Because uh, China has these wet markets where they sell many different species of animals uh, in closed spaces. And coronaviruses are usually infect most, mostly animals. And when you um, get so many different species of animals uh, in a cold space, uh, the virus can jump from species to species. Mm -hmm. And this is what we think that it happened. So the virus mutates, acquires uh, new abilities, and then it can infect a new species. This is what we thought that happened with humans. So even if the virus isn't artificial, uh, it is much, it is totally possible that it occurred in nature and nature can actually create viruses which are uh, pretty deadly that happened before and experts expected that and many experts warned governments to be prepared to stockpile medical equipment respirators uh, masks mm -hmm. just in case that such a virus happens and they told several years ago that most probably that would be a respiratory coronavirus but uh, nobody listened to them yes uh, in science fiction movies uh, all interesting science fiction movies begin uh, with a scientist who is being ignored by the yeah. government yeah. So that's classic classic superhero there is a lot of that and okay another question that we have is that there is some information around that that alkaline diet it will help you to control coronavirus uh the alkaline diet myth has been circulating for many years now and every time some disease pops up uh people say well the alkaline diet will help okay <laughs> the problem is that your body maintains a pretty tight range of uh, pH. So you can't make your body alkaline or more alkaline or more acidic because you will die. Uh, that, that's, however, some of the things in this diet like citrus fruits having large amounts of vitamin c they may be healthy on their own but it, it won't be the change in ph of the body that will affect your immunity mm -hmm. we have another one that they say that there are, there are secret cures for the coronavirus but they are hiding from the normal people and that just use it for the rich or stuff like that If they are secret, uh, how do we know about them? I, I don't know. It's just what is in the like conspiracy theory world that is telling that the, the, there is a, a few people that getting access to a full treatment against coronavirus and letting the other people die. The best, we have a hard time treating viruses anyway. Uh, the best treatment is uh, having a functioning medical system and intensive care units where you can receive a uh, proper amount of care. Uh, that is the most important thing uh, which we have currently. And also in order to develop a, uh, 
cure or a proper treatment for a disease, you need to run years of medical experiments in order to have the data and the statistics that this really works. Uh, it would be highly unlikely to develop a secret cure without having years of tests in advance, which would involve thousands of people, uh, of patients and uh, thousands of doctors and medical staff. It would be difficult to keep all of this in secret. All right. All right. And, and, and the last question, which advice you will give to the people that now is at home, is looking at this video and is worried about the future and stuff like that? What you will tell them? I can't tell no. I can't tell people not to worry. So there are things to worry about. If you're elderly, if you have chronic disease, you should take personal protection uh, seriously. That that's the first thing. If you are young, healthy, don't have any chronic diseases, if you don't care about the virus, you should implement uh, personal protection as well to protect others because you may infect other people even if you don't have any symptoms so you're feeling fine you're, you're feeling healthy but actually you're shedding the virus and can infect uh, the others uh, that's the first thing and the second thing is to that is the first time when a lot of people have actually free time to reconsider their lives So usually we go to work, uh, we return back home, we are tired, we don't have large stretches of time when we can think and analyze what's going on in our lives. That's useful, so don't watch TV or play video games, whatever. Really try to use the time productively to put your life in order. That's an invaluable opportunity. <laughs> I, I like it, that one. I like it, that advice. And I want to thank you very much for being with us today. Good My luck. My pleasure. Good luck and see you soon. See you soon. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.